Today on Tricro Studios, I bought a Gibson Explorer. We're gonna unbox it and get a little bit of a demo at the end. All right, so this is a bit of a bittersweet video for myself. Um, trying to make a long story short here and then we'll get into the actual unboxing. Uh, but the reason I have this guitar is because I had to cancel my Rivera Knucklehead Trey Reverb 120. Um, I bought that March 31st. I ordered it. It was originally supposed to be a month, but with COVID and stuff like that, you know, like two, three months, um, I was called a month later, told, you know what, they're just waiting on transformers, but it'll be here, uh, the transformers will be here within two to four weeks, and it'll be here immediately right after that. Um, then I was told, I was told three different times that that amp was in uh, Toronto, I'm in Edmonton in Canada. So, oh yeah, yeah, it should be here any day. Uh, and then I, I ordered it through Long & McQuaid, which I'm a very, very long time customer from, and I buy a lot. Um, not this year from them though. But uh, they really let me down. They lied to me quite a few times saying that it was actually in Toronto and was on the way. Um, when I actually went in today to find out more about it, uh, they actually told me there was absolutely no update uh, since July 17th. And the receipt actually states that uh, they called and got a weird voicemail. And that was the last time they heard anything. So. Um, the manager also, when I when I, I canceled the order and, and, and got this and then more money back, um, didn't even really apologize. He was just like, mm, that's on us. So I've um, had a lot of bad experiences with Long & McQuaid lately. Uh, and I, I, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not going to buy from them uh, in the future. Unless there's something magical, or stupid magical, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm done with Long & McQuaid. Um, I've been buying lately from Stang Guitars and it's just more convenient for me. Um, they have really cool guitars. Not, I'm not a large selection like Long McQuaid, but there's some really cool guitars, and uh, it's just very convenient to buy from them. That's also what I'm going to do. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into the unboxing. Uh, I used to own two different Explorers, a Classic White, or was it Alpine? I can't remember. And uh, an Ebony, and those were in 2007. They had that weird, like, when you, the, the gunky film that was... Um, on the back of the neck after you played for like a half hour. Um, so I kind of avoided those. Uh, I have some Kellys to really enjoy and I have a Hamer, um, which I kind of enjoy and kind of don't. And played one of these the other day and they're freaking awesome. So let's go ahead and uh, unbox it. Now I got this from the store itself. Um, so they already actually opened the top. So I'm not gonna be, I don't, I, I don't, I don't need to use a screwdriver instead of a knife. That was different. <laughs> These are heavy. Anyway, um, here is the case here for the Gibson Explorer. Um, one thing I want to note um, whenever I buy a new Gibson that comes with a case, uh, this actually has the newer style case uh, with the different like hinges on it. Um, hard to explain, but I, visually I like them. They're cool. So, and open it. Balancing on my knees. You can kind of see me. So it's very nice. Um, the fretboard. It looks like it's Granadillo, but um, I bought a lot of Gibsons, and like it doesn't really look like it has that powdery substance on it. Um, but I'm sure with oiling it, it will actually darken up uh, and stay darker. probably change the knobs too, I'm not sure yet. Anyway, um, the general stuff that comes with it, we have the baby picture, which not as out of focus. That's usually they are quite out of focus. You get the keys to the case. You have the leather strap. 
the details on when this was made. So this was made uh, February 23rd, 2021. Big old checklist there. And the accessories pack. So basically it's got like a little cloth in it and a Gibson multi-tool, which I have a multitude of those. And for those curious, the case, it's made in Costa Rica, not China. It used to be in Canada, but I'm cool with Costa Rica. All right, so here we go, the Gibson Explorer. Uh, so. As far as adjusting that I may have to do, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, it sort of has a feeling of the action's a skosh too high. I know, I hate that I said that too. But um, it's not that bad. And as far as the tension goes, uh, with this being moved down, it seems like it's in a pretty good condition or uh, area. So. We'll see. I'll probably take the strings off. And yeah, I actually, now looking at it, it does have, have the white film on the fretboard. Um, actually, that's pretty cool. I, I always like some of the figuring um, in the guitars. So you got some nice stuff here. And then right at, maybe hard to see. I uh, know you're not gonna be able to see it, but uh, there's actually like a part of wood grain up there. It looks pretty neat. Anyway, uh, there'll be a whole bunch of videos uh, on this guitar. I don't think I'll do a will it metal video, but I'll do a metal video with three different amp heads. Fortunately, Rivera is not gonna be one of them. Um, and then we'll do some obvious comparisons against the Les Paul Standard, against an SG Standard. I'll probably do the SG61 as well, against the Firebird. And honestly, how could I not? I'll end up comparing it against a Flying V. Even though this is a Flying V 98 um, 2007 reissue, it's still going to happen. All right, so let's go ahead and give this uh, a bit of a whirl, shall we? <laughs> 